Hello, everyone. Welcome back. We're back for episode five of the first ever National Cell Bowl. I'm here today with Ms. Marissa James and Mr. Aaron Odegaard, who keeps coming back because this is so much fun. It is. So, I love coming. <laughs> so we are very excited to talk with you today about the playoffs. We are already in the playoffs. Um, things are just mixing up completely. I've had a couple of um, polls online. And I think that you all will be surprised with what the polls say and what really happened this week. So um, first things first, let's go ahead and introduce Marissa. Thank you for joining us. Awesome. Here, I'll, I'll go ahead. Um, yeah. Um, so just a quick introduction. Um, I've known Marissa for a while. She is the North Kansas City Hospital MLS Program Director. She's been doing that for a while. She's got some amazing students. Um, she's also on the NACL Board of Directors as their vice president. Uh, she served on the ASCP in a couple different roles on the scholarship committee. And then also um, she's my fellow lab council member on the ASCP Council of Laboratory Professionals. So I'm very excited to have you here. Thank you. It's fun <laughs> to be here. So I'm, I, my students uh, thoroughly enjoyed uh, doing all of the um, you know, stuff on the little uh, cell phone and getting into the uh, competition of everything. So it's been, it's been a great event to be a part of. Well, I thank you for saying that. We're really excited because you're really the first program director whose students have been taking part in this event. So um, I've heard feedback from a lot of uh, students and program directors saying that this helping them with their cellular morphology. Are you finding that's true? Yeah, yeah, um, especially since my students kind of have two different, um, like they do their clinicals separate from their lecture series. So some of my students who were doing the competition weren't, uh, hadn't actually done their clinicals yet. They just learned about um, basically the word descriptions of all the cells. So they're actually able to kind of get a head start uh, before they go into their clinical rotations. So yeah, so they've enjoyed that. Um, th they feel like there's um, really fast internet because they're like, oh my gosh, how are they doing this in 39 <laughs> seconds and 33 <laughs> seconds? And so that's highly entertaining to listen that's to. That's what I feel I too. Like, <laughs> I myself can't even get all 30 in 30, like I can't even get into an actual second. So yeah. I, I feel like my down. brain stops for some reason. <laughs> I, can't, <laughs> like, oh, oh. I, I can't quit that. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, so it's, it's been a lot of fun to, um, you know, I, I like to just throw out, I'm like, all right, now we're at, you know, 52 seconds. And so then an hour later, I'll get, you know, three people who dropped the number. And so, you know, so I, I like to egg them on a little bit. So, oh, yeah, but yeah, we didn't make the we didn't make any of the, you know, the top five or anything like that. So that was kind of sad, uh, but it's OK. It was it's still fun and they could still get into the app and play. And oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So even if you're um, you were saying that they had 52 seconds and everything, they can still play in the international uh, cell bowl oh, individually. True. Yeah. So if they go ahead and put their. Um, name and fill out that form and everything. Um, we do have another winner this week. So, so far there's a, there's only four winners. So that started last week, then we have one this week. So there's two more chances for them to win. Oh, so please idea. make sure, yeah, they can still join in as well as our international students out there whom so far nobody has come in and done that. So um, I looked at the stats today of what our other countries are. We've got India, Pakistan, and the Philippines really rounding it out for um, outside of the U.S. who is really watching the channel. So then that's just been within the last month. So I know you yeah. all are out there. Please play. We'd love for you to play. Yeah. And it's nice swag, too. It is. Yeah. Oh, well, I guess I'm going to show you this then because this is from my Christmas line. This is the ugly Christmas sweater and it's from um, Mary Labness. So you've got the little uh, trees down there. And then on the side, you have. <laughs> you <laughs> spinning tubes. That is just. Can, so you, can you balance the centrifuge? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So those are snowflakes. Um, <clears throat> 
so the the fun thing about that is um, outside of the other types of uh, lab swag that you can get, this is actually in the um, in the fabric. The other ones are kind of like a printed on, but this is actually printed fabric. So it's as if um, there's like nothing there. You can't scratch it off or anything. And that's cool because that's not with any of the rest of them, except for the hematology hero stuff um, that has been uh, printed as part of the fabric itself too. And we've, um, we have pants as well, but they're, um, they're not as part of the international giveaway. Um, I have them down there, but I don't think they'd show with this background. Um, so yeah, we've got, um, we've got the hematology hero line that we've been putting out there for all of you who are winning and doing really great jobs. So uh, please keep it up, keep on trying. Um, I hope that it really is helping you all uh, as we were saying, because that's really the intent. We're trying to help you all do really great at learning the hematology cell lines and the morph morphology that differentiates them, but also to help promote uh, who you are and what it is uh, that you're getting into because it's a great profession and we need to stop being hidden. We need to be um, seen because we need people to come in and uh, help save lives with us. So um, Marissa, we have um, uh, a lot of great things to talk about with you uh, because number one, you've been in different roles in ASCP and so you were on the scholarship committee. Can you tell our students who are watching about that a little bit, please? Yeah, so um, I think it was it's about once a year. I think the time frame to apply for the scholarship is about March, April, May. You'll want to check out the ASCP website, and um, there they have a little student section that you can apply for scholarships. And so I happen to uh, get into that um, part of that selection committee, and uh, so it's a it's kind of a grading scale that they use. Um, so they. They take into consideration, obviously, your GPA, um, and but they also get some recommendations as well. They're also looking for leadership activities as well as community service. And each one of those items are weighted. And so you get like between, you know, one and three points if you like were the leader of the MLS club or, uh, you know, the president of the MLS club or like there were even um, I remember reading like really great stories from students who had went back to um, maybe they're an international student. They went back to their home country and did some sort of immersion with, um, you know, their their community, um, you know, maybe in an um, impoverished area or or, you know, an area that um, didn't, you know, doesn't have some of the um, some of the equipment that we have and so they would bring things in so there were just so many great stories of um, or people who uh, worked full-time while going through college uh, going through the MLS program so all those kind of things um, we take into consideration or at least we did um, when I was a part of that group I'm sure they still do that and uh, I'm not entirely sure I think that is through the ASCP foundation now so if you are an ASCP member for those that are not students, you can still kind of help participate in that by donating um, with along with your dues, your ACP membership dues, and that goes into the foundation. And there are a lot of different scholarship and award um, that uh, that they use that um, foundation for. So it was a fantastic experience. I got to meet a lot of really great ASCP um, leaders, and then that kind of led me into. Um, being an ASCP representative on the NACLS board of directors. And so um, I've done that for, I just finished my first term, just out now starting my second term. Um, so <clears throat> I was uh, chair of a couple different areas in NACLS uh, board of directors. And then recently, um, uh, last year, I guess, started out as the secretary for the board of directors and then moved into the vice president role uh, just in um, September, after the September board meeting. And so NACLS is um, N-A-A-C-L-S. So it's, it's for anyone who wonders, like, why can we ever change it to NAMLS or anything like that? Like NACL, I've heard that before. So <laughs> NACLS, like clinical laboratory sciences, is a broad term. So 
that includes all of the NACL's accredited programs. So that includes MLT, MLS, HT, HTL, um, you know, CT, and, and I'm sure PA, I'm, I'm trying yeah, to get yeah. all the ones that I'm forgetting, PBT, there's, I mean, there's a ton um, if you, you know, if you were to dig into there. Um, so that term, the clinical laboratory sciences is, is the broader term. And so by um, having that accreditation, it ensures to the public that you are attending a school that is um, reputable, that <clears throat> has been peer reviewed. It's not, um, you know, NACLS is a staff of about 10 people of paid staff. The rest of it is, is by volunteer. So program directors, <laughs> um, education coordinators, they can all participate um, with, within NACLS. Um, right now we're taking nominations for, uh, there's various um, leadership positions within NACLS. Uh, some of those are the review committee, uh, which is RCAP, um, or park uh, that's for the approval and then also uh, just to get on the board as well for some of our vacancies so and there's obviously like a nominations process there's a nominations committee in NACLS um, but yeah so I mean you're a you're a, you start as an ASCP student member you can go on to the website and just kind of hunt and hunt through there and see what volunteer opportunities are available um, and you just never know what that's going to lead to. So that was kind of, you know, ACP obviously has a special, you know, because I passed the boards. Yep. <laughs> so I have that, you know, I have that certification. But it also just has that special uh, place in my heart because it has led to some other opportunities. Um, so that's that's been really, it's been re a really fun adventure, just kind of leapfrogging from one thing to another just by starting with volunteering for ACP. It's true. You never know where life will take you. You don't. You don't. So just in giving back. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So Marissa did a really great job of explaining um, what NACLS is, but for anybody who's still a little foggy on that, um, all of the programs that are clinical laboratory programs, um, she named a lot of different types of laboratory positions like histotech and um, cytotechnologists and all of those different ones, um, phlebotomy, mm -hmm. um, they're accredited or approved by NACLS. Um, so that's the national um, accrediting agency for clinical laboratories. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were just gonna jump in. So I just stopped no, for a second. Step, I, yeah. I, can. I appreciate that. Um, it's pretty long. Um, so <laughs> it's, it's a very extensive between, process. It really is. Um, the difference between um, ASCP and NACLS are that um, ASCP requires in um, mainly the first route of all of the different eligibility requirements for the certification exams for you to come from a NACLS accredited program or a NACLS approved program. So as she was saying, that means that they are holding that program to certain standards. So every so many years, um, whatever the case may be for a program who is doing continuing accreditation, they can get different amount of times that they're accredited for. Um, they have to be reviewed. They have a site visit uh, where um, volunteers come in and they check out the program, check out the curriculum, and make sure that it is holding to the standards that are required by NACLS, which then feeds into ASCP certification, where you get your ability to practice laboratory medicine in the professional environment um, by getting that certification. So thank you so much for explaining yeah. the difference and, between those two. And Tiffany, even for, um, if you're in a, a state licensure, state like Florida, um, all those programs in order to qualify for licensure, you have to graduate from a NACLS accredited program. You can't Absolutely. come from one that isn't to work in the entire state. So it's a, it's a big deal. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. And so Aaron, do you want to talk about uh, licensure for a second? Like what's really involved? Is it another, um, is it another test or is it just uh, showing your documentation of your quality of uh, credential? So for a uh, handful of states, uh, Florida and New York being uh, two examples, uh, typically you have to submit um, continuing education. Um, for Florida, it's um, 
HIV and medical errors, you start out with you have come from a NACLS accredited program, um, be board certified either from ASCP, AMT, or ABB. Um, and then every two years you have to renew and you have to show that you've maintained your competency in a certain number of areas. So in Florida, even to work as a molecular tech during COVID, you have to be licensed at, in molecular. So it's an extra safety and um, it guarantees the standard and quality of the people coming into the field, so. Absolutely, so it's not like um, a nursing tech or a licensed practical nurse, even though they may do um, some waived testing, it doesn't mean that they can just jump into the laboratory and do any tests that they want. So a lot of, a lot of people don't understand that the complexity of testing um, is, it requires certain qualifications in order for you to practice that profession. So we have varying levels of um, professionals within the lab itself um, that say, yes, you can do this um, versus uh, these, um, these duties because of your certification and or um, license. So um, not just anybody can work in the lab. You have to go to school for it. You have to be certified or licensed or both um, in order to do that. So um, absolutely. So thank you. Hey, Tiffany. Yes. Are you ready? Ready for what? Are you ready to sailboat? <laughs> yes. It's going to be a blast. <laughs> it's going to be a blast. All yes, right. <laughs> absolutely. Woo. All right. So I'm sharing my screen right now. <laughs> You're in the playoffs. This is exciting. This is awesome. All right. So we've got a lot going on this week. Um, there's uh, some international play that happened. And as I said, so far, just the U.S. is participating so everyone out there who's watching all over the world, please make sure if you beat that 58.895 seconds perfect score, make sure you follow the link in the description of this video and submit your score in that online form. So it is a Google form and you would need a Google account in order to fill it out. Um, and so maybe that's what's happening. I'm not sure, but I'd love to see someone from our other countries that are watching um, and hopefully playing to participate. So this week from New York State, not city, New York, we've got Miguel Hutchinson and he won, he won this beautiful shirt right here. Um, I wore it, I think in the second week of um, the second episode. It's a great shirt, fits comfortably, it's really nice. Um, and it shows everybody that you're a hematology hero. So uh, congratulations, Miguel. Yeah. That's really wonderful. I, I like it. So for me to win that shirt, I'd have to actually beat your time. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's going to happen, but uh, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I remember you saying at one time, um, beating medical lab lady Gill at her own game, you know? <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> The microbiologists <laughs> were very infectious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't count us out. We're, we're <laughs> emerging resistance. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want to create a game where it's like this, too, I'd be happy to play it. Um, that would be really neat. Uh, we do have people that are actually asking, can we get this type of game and involvement with other um, professions like phlebotomy or um, you know, other areas of the lab, like your analysis and micro. So if anybody knows of any other app like this one uh, from the Cellivision Cell Atlas app, please let me know, put it in the comments section, um, show me in Twitter. That would be really great because I think, I think everybody really wants to do more stuff like this. It's a really great time. Um, and that leads us into talking Ooh. about where we've been um, in order to talk about where we're going. So we did the playoffs this week, but 
let's take a look down memory lane in week four. So in week four, um, how we moved forward to the playoffs was to have an average score. Obviously, that was, <clears throat> excuse me, high enough to make it towards the top six, right? So the weird thing about this is that we didn't have a whole lot of uh, teams out in the West, right? We had a whole bunch of teams in the um, Midwest and the East. Uh, yeah, woo! Um, but the West, um, <laughs> the West, we had seven and really only three participated. Um, so the top two are shown here. So all of the, the six that are moving, excuse me, excuse me, the um, six that are moving, had moved into the playoffs are highlighted here. So the um, weird thing about this was, was that um, the second West program was down here in slot 22. Um, I've been asked about this. That's why I'm talking about it. Um, so um, for, for us to move forward with the rules that we have, they end up automatically moving to the top six. So UC Davis um, ends up moving into the top six because they're the second West team. And then the other teams from the Midwest and the East were up in the top five. Okay, so everyone who was um, six and down are gonna move down one in order to um, be your final place in the competition. So UT Health, you're moving down to number seven. College of Southern Maryland, woo, went from number seven to number eight, and it, it continues like that, okay? So just because you were one of the top 25 that I posted in Twitter, I'm sorry, I have a lozenge in my mouth. Um, the top 25 on Twitter and in the community tab of the YouTube channel, this is why you move down one, okay? So I just wanna make sure everybody understands that everybody's doing a great job. This was the average time for each um, program's team, just to give you that. Yes, Aaron. I see a really awesome program in slot 19. I don't know if um, <laughs> program director <laughs> Marissa James wants to comment at all or that's pretty no, awesome. My attention is on the <laughs> right side of the slide. Look at those times, y'all. <laughs> like 20 what? seconds, 20 My brain doesn't seconds? work that fast. <laughs> I can't even, I don't even know if I could touch my cell phone. 23, <laughs> like, I don't, like, insane. So I just, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's direct the attention away, away from, uh, what is it? That's number number seven and number 19. <laughs> Poor no, Tiffany and no, I. No, that, they, those are really incredible. Out of 73 teams and, you know, we're finishing in the top 25. That's incredible. All right. I'm, all right. All right. I'm shouting that out to everybody. Yeah. I'm so proud of my team. I'm so proud of everybody actually, but, um, I just keep telling everybody we were seventh in the nation on week four, but now we're eight <laughs> in the competition. So <laughs> make sure you're, you know, shouting it loud and proud. Everybody oh, yeah. deserves a great round of applause. So great job. We're very proud of you. Great job, everybody. Round of yes, applause. The whole round. And a seal oh, of approval. So um, just to give a little bit of recap, I thought this was pretty neat. We had eight of those 25 were actually MLT programs and seven of those eight were in the top 15. So yeah, MLTs are representing. And then um, 15 out of the 25 were MLS programs. That's four-year programs. MLT is two-year programs. And um, two out of those 25 were both. So um when we first started this, you had a team for your institution. You didn't have a separate team for MLT and MLS if you had both. They were all one team. Okay. So that's how the game has been being played. Now let's move over to how the playoffs went this week. 
probably shouldn't have done that because this ends up right under us in the video. Um, so the touchdown this week was with Weber State. Wow. So congratulations. Good job. Yeah, four out of the five weeks have been taken by Weber State with the touchdown. All right. Two seconds. Yeah. Um, I did not do the how many seconds did they move this time. I'm just letting that be now. It's still impressive. That's, it is. Yeah. We did not hit that challenge of the 20 seconds that I put out there for that free backpack. <laughs> but oh I didn't think close. it was humanly possible. <laughs> really and they almost made it. So I am very, very impressed. That's incredible. So way to go. Um, I still don't think it's humanly possible. So it might have been a complete bogus challenge, but I just put it out there for you anyway. Um, and my students are still trying to do it too. They're like, I want a backpack. <laughs> so, uh, we'll see how that goes. I'll let you all know. Um, they're still playing, just not in the national event. So um, they got the touchdown this week. So um, let's talk about Let's talk about how this is going. All right. So these are the top six because of gameplay, right? Mm -hmm. And it is pretty spread out. It's actually a sandwich. Um, what do you call that? Where it's a repeat um, backwards and forwards. That's what we have here. Palindrome. Thank you. Um, palindrome. So we got West on a club sandwich because it's all different <laughs> levels. And then I was like, oh, wait, no. What? <laughs> a little bit of a little bit of rule of let's see what's going on. There how everybody go, stacks. Oh, it's stacking, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So we've got the West leading with Weber State. Um, then we've got the Midwest with Wisconsin. So um Catherine would be very proud today. She would. Yes. Um, the East is coming up. So last week. Um, my program and Southern uh, West Virginia beat Weber State. Uh, so that was really awesome. Um, last week, uh, Southern West Virginia had the touchdown and we were right behind them. Um, but this week, Weber State took it back. So um, we are trying to bring it to the East. Um, I would love it. Uh, Aaron and I would love it if the East took it this year. Um, and we hope they do, and they're pre in pretty good standing. So we've got um, the every region being represented in the top three. So what does that mean? That means they're moving forward, right? The bottom three um, are very well represented also with University of West Florida, um, rounding out that fourth spot and University of Kansas Medical Center is in number five, and they're they're all staying there. Four, five, and six have already been determined. UCD, uh, UC Davis is uh, rounding it out with sixth place. So let's move that to the next slide, if I can. Okay, go West Florida. Yeah, go West Florida. Yep. So this is just showing what I was saying. So on the right, you have the teams that have already made their stand and they're staying where they are, right? So um, we've got four, five, and six here. And the rest of them who are battling out in week six are going to be West Virginia, Wisconsin, and California with Weber, right? So how does this work? So in week six, the top three go uh, from week five, the top three move forward. They're going to see who are the top two. And the top two in week six are gonna move forward into the Super Cell Bowl. Woo! So um, I, had, I had two polls out and I'm gonna tell you how this went because I think this is very neat. Are you so, okay with me giving one more shout out to West Florida? Absolutely. I'm very sad. <laughs> Great job, um, Katie and Dr. Bayhan and Mark DeLuna and Jenny Page Ford. Awesome job, guys. Okay, thank you. And, I had to have my moment. University of Kansas, they're my neighbors. Yeah. They're, they, they're just across the river. 
so uh, for me, so they're they're like probably 15 minutes from where I'm at. So Eric Elsinghorst and uh, Dana Baker. So yep. Good job, y'all. Great job. So we have um, on the um, in the community uh, tab of my YouTube channel, I put out a, a poll. Who do you think will win the cell ball? And I was only allowed to provide three poll options. So we have 35% um, of the 17 votes were voting for the West. So either Weber or UC Davis. 41% said that they were voting for the Midwest, whether that be Wisconsin or Kansas. And only 24% said the East. Now, I'm not sure if that's a retaliation for uh, Aaron and I constantly rooting for the East. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> it might be. It really might be because we're a little biased here, but that's okay. You know, you got to represent your own, um, you know, homegrown team, right? You do. And then on Twitter, there was less participation. Um, we only had a few votes <clears throat> and the votes were interesting because they don't match what actually happened. So we had three votes um, and out of the two in the West, Weber State won with the Twitter vote and that's what really happened. So that's awesome. And then um, in the Midwest, they said Kansas and actually North Wisconsin ended up pulling through. So um, Twitter is not pulling so through there. Yeah. And then the two votes that were for the East one, everybody voted for West Florida and yeah. it's actually Southern West Virginia that's moving forward. So I'm going to keep polling everyone and see what they think. So this week's poll is going to be, who do you think is going to go to the, um, the Super Cell Bowl, and who do you think is going to win again? I, I might just keep that one up. I might need to take tomorrow off after after hearing this. <laughs> uh, Colin and sick. It is heartbreaking. Yep. Yep. The micro lab will have to wait. Yeah. You know, we're, we've got some great uh, hematology heroes emerging. Um, the teams, oh man, the teams we had left were not the Bob cats because they don't have a mascot anymore but we've got the eagles and we've got the wild cats and the no names <laughs> so go you three that's going to be really a great it's really going to be a great show i don't know uh how i don't know how we're going to contain our excitement because it's going really really well and it's just throwing out all the rules, you know, the way you thought it was going to be is not always the way it's been. So it's usually what happens. Yeah. In a crazy it's, game it's, of uh, hematology. Yeah. Those dips so, come out of nowhere sometimes and then you get hit with a blast <laughs> and more blasts. <laughs> Speaking of which, we're going to move in towards talking about um, white blood cells some more. We're talking about monocytes and macrophages today. So um, Professor James, would you like to start out with Very the, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. So um, monocytes uh, are the biggest, the biggest cells in, um, in, on your differential. And so oftentimes um, if, you, if you were to count them um, on a, like a sapphire or a uh, Sysmex or something like an automated CBC, um, they're going to fall in that big, that big category, but that's also where sometimes your blasts will fall as well. So um, they'll often get accidentally categorized as monocytes. So, um, so just start with they're the biggest. They've got um, folded nucleus. I always like to call it the brain like convolutions, um, cerebriform folding. Um, when you're a student, you need to be able to visually see um, and identify your monocytes, but then you also need to have some of those like key words, key descriptors. Um, <clears throat> and so they are kind of a pale gray blue. Generally, they have some vacuoles. 
Um, they might have some little, little red granules um, that uh, have some acidic contents. They also have the FCA complement receptors. Um, and then depending on where they're going, they may have some um, ke uh, chemokine receptors as well. Most people remember our monocytes as being the phagocy phagocytosis, uh, they, which is eating, ingesting bad guys. And so <clears throat> they'll often travel to tissues. And when they travel to the tissues, they're actually called macrophages at that point. Um, or even an osteoclast or a dendritic cell. Um, the macrophages, um, uh, generally when I see these, these are in different um, body fluids. Uh, so like maybe um, spinal fluid or uh, pleural fluid or something along those lines. And they, um, they have a ov more oval nucleus. They are also vacuolated. Um, they've got primary granules with some proteins. But again, I always call my um, macrophages tissue monocytes. Um, and so they kind of have some of the same type of function that your monocyte does. So they're going to be involved with um, cytokines, phagocytosis. Uh, they also um, are the antigen presenting cells uh, to your T and B lymphocytes. They remove debris. They remove dead cells. They recycle. Um, they've got... Um, they uh, produce different proteins and different um, tissues. Um, and so, yeah, you got something for me? Oh, I was going to add a little bit. Yep, um, go for it. So I absolutely agree. We've talked a little bit about macrophages already um, in other episodes where we were talking about uh, macrophage being in the RBC islands, um, the center of the islands, uh, in the bone marrow. And I wanted to point that picture out right here. This is what that looks like. So this is a bone marrow picture. The rest of them are, uh, I think, peripheral blood. Um, this one might be from the bone marrow with the blast. But um, Notice so it's very vacuolated and what they're doing is just, you know, they're eating up the nucleus that's coming out of the red cell. Um, we've talked about, well, in, in chemistry, we talk about the osteoclasts and they're really incredible. They, uh, they basically adsorb the bone and they make it so that the calcium and phosphorus are liberated in order to be used for um, circulating calcium and calcium is used in like everything, um, muscle contraction and coagulation and so many different processes uh, that it's crazy. Even, um, you know, macrophages have a function with calcium regulation also. Uh, but the, the fun thing that I like to uh, say is that they're kind of, you know, even though they've matured in the bone marrow, they're basically wanting to be a macrophage. They're heading off, you know, on their great self-discovery <laughs> type of journey to whatever tissue they're heading to. And um, they're going to do their final real job once they get to that tissue. So that's in all these different places because they're what honestly help keep us healthy outside of our um, normal flora in those different locations. So I just thought that was worth mentioning there. We called them airport security in episode two. And yeah, that's really, that's really what they do. They're just making sure that everyone who goes by looks like they're supposed to be there and making sure that you all stay healthy. So um, big Very shout important. out to our macrophages. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, <laughs> I like being you. alive. <laughs> <laughs> I do yeah, too. That's a, that's a good, I, I'd never thought about it like that, but that's pretty good. Um, so <clears throat> with at regards to the leukopoiesis, um, there's a feedback mechanism that controls the production of monocytes in the bone marrow. And so um, I think some of this was what you were speaking about, Tiffany. So um, I'll probably go into our, our um, pictures in the middle. Um, if one okay. thing I always like to point out about the monocytes or the monocytic line is the cell size is roughly the same from a blast to um, the monocyte. That's really not the case in some of the other um, cell lines. 
And uh, so they're just always large. Now your monoblast obviously has the big eyeball looking at you, your nucleoli. Um, sometimes that um, nucleus is, or nucleoli is, is off center. Um, I, got it. I know. Yes. That, <laughs> might need a, that might need a review. <laughs> Oh, it's right here. Oh, There's the one. Yeah. <laughs> it looks good. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's two of them. Yep. Two. And uh, so the NC ratio and the nuclear to chromatin is your nucleus is ginormous, is what I would I say. So it's seven times uh, or up to four to seven times bigger than the, the skinny little um, uh, cytoplasm, I guess I should say, sorry, um, on the outside. And um, might be a little folding in there. Um, very basophilic cytoplasm. Um, bluish. And then the promonocyte, that's when you really start to see it look like a normal, um, really going down the path of a monocyte. Because, you know, what we always say at our hospital, a blast is a blast is a blast. We don't, he doesn't really know what he is yet. He doesn't have <laughs> his granules yet. He doesn't know who he is um, quite yet. If you see our rods, you can, you know, rule out the fact that it's, um, it's not, you know, it could be a myeloblast. Mm -hmm. um, but the absence of our rods doesn't necessarily mean could still could be a myeloblast, could be a monoblast also. Um, so they're, they, they really don't know um, what they are quite yet. So you do your special stains or your flow, all that kind of stuff. So the promonocyte is, there's, there's where you kind of get that cerebriform, like a little brain, brainy looking um, nucleus. And then you got a lot of, um, you got some vacuoles um, in there. And then sometimes you have the little, um, those little pink guys, um, mm -hmm. little pink granules. I don't see any in this one, but, um, I can see it on my end, but I bet it's really hard to see. Okay. Yeah. But they're out on the periphery. They're, they're very scattered. They're not yeah. really like a uniform, um, presentation like eosinophils, right? It's like oh, yeah. a dusting. Is what yeah. I, what I've, yeah. 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 It's cool. I do see the brain. Yeah. We're here. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And then um, the cytoplasm, I always find that word blebbing to be so fun to say, mm -hmm. bleb-like pseudopods um, out at the border. Uh, blebs are just, I don't know, it's just a fun word to say over and over. Um, <laughs> and then, um, then we get to your monocyte. A lot of times you'll see that horseshoe um, nucleus, um, or it looks like we've got, sometimes it's a kidney, elongated. Um, starting to see the NC ratio get more one to one, maybe two to one. Starting to see more of that lacy, um, uh, lacy cy cytoplasm in the, on the outside, and then a little bit of lacy actually in the um, chromatin or in the uh, nucleus as well. Um, and yep, there it talks about those little dust or ground glass granules and uh, blebs. Well, I gotta say bleb again. I like it. <laughs> Blebs. Blebs. That's, that's. And, and you'll also see it's getting a little more grayish. Uh, yeah. Not quite that bright blue. And then uh, Tiffany already talked about the little macrophage or the big macrophage, I guess. Lots and lots of um, vacuoles there. And you're not really going to see those in the peripheral blood either. So anytime that you see something that, uh, you know, is vacuolated, um, and big, most likely this isn't, you know, not everything is textbook, but most likely it's going to be uh, that mac, no, monocyte, not the macrophage. That's why I was saying not. <laughs> um, yeah, the, I remember being in MT school, which is now MLS. Um, I was in a hospital-based program that I ended up teaching in after, but um, the the ground glass is what really got me. I'm like, I don't even yeah. know what that means. What, what are you talking about? And it just really is that it's opaque. You can't see through it and it looks grainy. Mm -hmm. That's really all that means. <laughs> but yeah. it, you know, you look like, it looks like you might be able to see through it, but then you really can't because it looks kind of thin um, because of the light coming through it. But that always got me. Do you have anything to say about that, Marissa? No, I mean, I like the little, um, the, the little pink guys. I always like to see those. Yeah, uh, so I don't know if you yeah. can see them, uh, Actually, but they are you, here. Now yeah. that you hover over there, I can see them a little bit better. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. 
So they have, um, they call that the azure dust yep. or the ground glass. Um, but that always got me. I didn't understand these terms when I was a student. I'm like lacy chromatin, mm -hmm. clump chromatin. What are you talking about? Yeah. But then <laughs> now it's like, okay, is it darker? Yeah. If it's darker, it's because the chromatin is clumping. If it's lighter, it's because right. it has a looser formation. It's more spread out. And then, you know, you talk about when does mitosis happen and that starts to make more sense. But we, I don't remember us talking about that kind of stuff when I was going through. Yeah. So it was very interesting. Yeah, I remember the blubs in the ground glass from my hospital-based program that I went through. And, and I always thought, uh, um, cause generally the lacy is referring to the, um, to the cytoplasm, but I sometimes, you know, we'll see a little bit of that pattern in the nucleus as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, I just, I always, the lacy is always what I'm looking for, gotcha. especially cause these guys look like, um, can look like reactive limbs. Yeah. Um, that's in that, the other that part gets, of it. That really always throws my students for a loop. Yeah. Um, so hard to know the difference yeah. unless you know what you're looking for. Um, well, it's just, it's practice, 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 right? right? Exactly. And, and, you know, even, even normals, you need to practice a lot of, um, just because then when you see something abnormal, you know, it's abnormal. You may not know exactly what it is, but you at least can say, I need help. You know, right. yeah. I need a, I need to phone a friend or something like that. Yeah. I'll always ask for a second set of eyes. Yep. 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 Yeah, so, so oh yeah, sorry. You go sorry. Um, as you were saying, this chart is normal, healthy adult. Mm -hmm. um, as we said last week when we were talking about granulocytes, uh, when you get into leukemias and that sort of thing, the cytoplasm and the nucleus are maturing at a different rate. So you're not going to see these normal looking um, types of cells and blasts. You're going to see something completely different. And the, um, this is actually the picture that we had last week. It was the um, myeloblast because they look so similar. Yeah. Um, when you have the pluripotent cells, they differentiate a little bit and the, the neutrophil and the mono go together. And then the other granulocytes go together, the um, basophils and the eosinophils. So um, that's why I just kept the same picture. I honestly couldn't find one even in uh, ASH that actually had the normal, I mean, you see a lot of abnormal in uh, the um, American Society for Hematology Image Bank. It's, it's a lot of abnormal, so it's very hard to find a normal blast in there. Just for our students, in case you're looking, um, you can absolutely find those. And I did find the cup uh, formation that uh, Catherine was talking about last week mm -hmm. with uh, acute leukemia. And I might be posting that later on Twitter to show you as a follow up what she was talking about. All right, back to you, Professor James. Yep. <laughs> All right. So, um, so for the smear review, let's see here. So you're thinking um, when you're doing a, like a differential, is that what this is? I'm just looking at this real quick. Um, so I moving it, I'll, I'll move it. So we like to compare it, like if you're looking at okay. the peripheral smear, how does it relate back to the automated CBC? What are the types of things you should be looking for? Okay, okay. Um, so so when you first uh, put this through like your instrument, your, um, we use the SysMex, uh, it'll, it'll count things and it, it's gonna categorize them. It's just, a, it's an algorithm. And so it's gonna count them by size and internal complexity. A, and it's going to do that for all your different cells. And so um, if there will sometimes be categorized incorrectly, like I alluded to earlier, a blast is probably going to fall into um, a monocyte um, population. And so if that happens, you do need to, um, uh, you usually will get some sort of a blast flag. So then you're going to look at it under the microscope. And um, then you're going to uh, differentiate from there with your own eyeballs. Because kind of like Tiffany was saying, um, if you've got someone with leukemia, you're kind of looking to see what do all their cells look like because all their cells may have a different look, a different color, different types of varying vacuoles. You know, it just may, they may all look weird. 
uh, but they may not be, um, well, they, they just, they look different but it's not gonna be your textbook type of situation. So you always kind of look and see, we always say the company that they keep um, <laughs> and <clears throat> just double check that. And so again, as you're looking at your automation, you're gonna be looking at all of the different flags, how many white cells are there? Um, you know, My normal range for white cells is 4,500 to 11,000. Um, what percent of those are monocytes uh, should run in the two to 11% um, doesn't um, give you anything for macrophages. And um, just kind of looking to make sure that the cells that are categorized are categorized correctly. And your differential by hand, you're only counting 100 cells. And that always, it, it goes um, in lieu of what the automated count was. And um, <clears throat> every, every now and again, I've done diffs before that I only had to do 50 cells because maybe they had so few white cells and then if that happens, you have to adjust your percentage by hand, um, or you might have some sort of computer capability, but you do have to bear in mind that those numbers will be um, slightly different. It's not going to be, you know, you see 50 uh, monocytes <clears throat> and it's 50%, you know, if, it, if, that, if, they, if that's a, um, a, maybe it would be for a 100 cell diff, it's easy peasy, but if you've got a 50 cell diff and you'll, you'll have to take that, you know, 30 out of 50, if you saw 30 monocytes as an example. Um, other things that look like monocytes are gonna be those large lymphocytes. And those, those are hard. Um, reactive lymphocytes also look like them as well. A lot of times with those, and I think is lymph lymphocytes next week? Mm -hmm. Okay. so you'll probably get a little bit more into this, but um, I always am looking for my scalloped edges for my reactive lymphocytes, which means that they're, um, the cytoplasm of your lymphocytes is bending around the red cells and a little bit bluer around, you know, kind of creating like a little scalloped edge. Um, <clears throat> and so that, that helps me out. I'm also looking for a lot of vacuoles, the lacy patterns um, for my monocytes as well. Um, and then for our conditions, I think, did I, is there anything I'm skipping there that you want to see per se? No. Nope. Tiffany? Okay, cool. So conditions generally um, follow what's going on with your granulocytes, like your neutrophils or something like that. Um, you could, because they're, the neutrophils also are, are um, have those phagocytic um, properties as well. So they're kind of working in tandem to kind of help out but there are congenital and acquired quantitative disorders, um, you know, decreased, increased issues. There's, um, but really even the qualitative disorders, it's very, um, there just seem to be very rare specific to mm. monocytes. They are, yeah. Generally like a leukemia is the increased numbers and um, maybe somebody on chemotherapy or you know, a gamma globulinemia or something like that, where all of their white cells are decreased. It's not usually just a monocyte issue all by itself, unless it's um, what is it, A M M O L um, M four mm -hmm. in the F A B uh, M five with the uh, F A B classification, and then M four if you've got both monos and um, myeloblasts together. So um, yeah, that's yeah. That, I mean that's. Monocytes are just, they just kind of help out where they can. They're not really, I don't want to say they're not special because they're awfully pretty. Oh, they're, yeah, all the cells are special. But <laughs> but, um, but they just, they don't really have any standout. Like I always say, okay, what do you think of when you think of increased, you know, lymphocytes? Oh, it's fighting a virus and, you know, increased neutrophils. Oh, it's fighting a bacteria. bacteria. You know, there's not really, it doesn't really, it's not really like that with monocytes. So. Yeah, they're they're so versatile. Yeah, it's hard to really nail down, you know, one particular thing because they're able to bind to um, cells with viral infections. They're able to bind to viruses. And, mm -hmm. Sorry, I just said that um, parasites, bacteria. <laughs> I'm tired. Uh, <laughs> and you know, they're really involved with inflammation and getting the cell mediated immunity started. So, you know, they're very, they're very, very prominent in that arena kind where of. they're pulling, 
pulling in that foreign entity and surrounding it with their own membranes so that they're keeping you safe, but they're keeping themselves safe. And they're basically, you know, immobilize the threat, mm -hmm. kill it, <laughs> and then present the um, antigens on its cellular membrane. And I, yeah. I, I kind of have a little bit of like morbid ways of talking about that, like the old tribal type of things, like putting like heads on stakes and stuff, um, you know, to Man. say like, <laughs> don't come here kind of deal. But it's like that. Mm -hmm. the, the macrophages are going to display those um, pieces of whatever foreign entity that it broke down using that, um, you know, phagosome and, mm -hmm. and allowing for the T cells to take it from there and then get, uh, get the B cells going with those, um, those immunoglobulins and everything. So uh, I was just going to say a jack of all trades, but you got yeah. like tribal heads and <laughs> I classify <laughs> this as not for kids. So, well, I, I need, um, I find yeah. that everybody seems to be visual. really visual. Yeah. And you want something that's memorable that the students are really going to remember. And I talk about war. I talk about tribal wars. I talk about history, you know, and relate it all together. And this they're like, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that fight. happened in history. And I'm like, yeah. And um, so I'm, I like, I like a lot of different things. <laughs> As you were saying, a jack of all trades. I like a lot yeah. of different things. And um, making it very relatable and real because, you know, cellular interactions. I remember when I was learning about cell stuff, I was like, really? Everything just goes down to the cell. And it seemed at the time, because I was young and dumb, that, um, you know, that wasn't cool. But now <laughs> I'm like, it's awesome. And let me tell you why. And so we interact, we do you know, little skits. I relate it to their everyday lives. I, I've even used cellular dating, you know, as a thing, um, just to get There's, them excited about it. And try to remember what it's called. There's an anime show that's white blood cells. Yes, cells on the job. Is that isn't that what it is? Cells on the job. I think that's what it's called. I saw a part of one episode because um, a friend of mine from um, my bachelor's degree. Uh, she was like, hey, have you seen this? And I'm not really into anime and stuff, but that was really neat. It's it's not, obviously it's not displayed accurately visually, right? Because the, like the macrophage is a monster, you know, and not, not a cell. You know, but it, it does talk about the different roles, which is cool. Any little thing helps. It helps yeah. it stick a little bit. So, yeah. Yeah. There's um, comic books out. They were selling them in Target and stuff. And um, they were science ones. And my, my girls were like, hey, mom, come on over here and take a look at this. I'm like, oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you all want to jump in on a comic book. We absolutely uh could that would be awesome um here are the references that i used i didn't use any of my images this week i i guess i got a little lazy because i've not been feeling well um, I, I could do that that could be a differential hero yeah um and uh that's really it for our tutorial thing does anybody have anything left to say Aaron, do you have anything from the micro side that you might uh, want to talk about with um, macro? No, you, you, you guys covered it. Um, very grateful for my um, macrophages and monocytes. Absolutely. Part of the fighting the good fight. I'm ready for some selfies. That's right. Ooh. Here we Ooh. go. All right. So you I all. love that red cell. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Selfie red cell. Um, you all were not good at uh, submitting selfies this week. So this is a rehash of what I've seen in other weeks. We, I pulled them out to have, you know, friends for the little red cell right here. Um, the only team that did submit a new selfie this week was Kansas because they're always having fun. They're um, awesome. Yes. 
So um, they are rocking hard, right? <laughs> and they are all thumbs up. Um, we've got Kansas masking up. Uh, we've got UC Davis. Um, we've got West Virginia and with the little red cell in the middle. <laughs> oh, yeah. And we've got West Florida. Oh. And we've got Weber State, Wisconsin. Where are you? <laughs> we want to see your pictures. Come on, on. That's right. And I guess that's it. Does anybody have anything else they want to say? Can West Florida get a half point for um, <laughs> submitting a selfie? No. Does it no. <laughs> you, know what? you need to oh. drop their time by a second or two or something. Yeah. Huh. If you if you get a half a second, then I get a half a second, and I get in the top six. Oh, okay. I, I don't want to go there. Eric. Oh, okay, we can't do that. I know. <laughs> no, nope, we gotta be. We have to be fair. We gotta play yeah. the yeah. Stick to the rules. All right. Well, um, that is it for the recording.